I will start with one question though, um, and I'll get you to think about it to, your, to yourselves, and then we might come back to it in a while, but that is, in November 2014, during the last government, how many cranes were on the horizon in Frankston building major infrastructure? Now keep that to yourselves, some of you might know the answer, some of you might not. The experience for visitors and locals alike in Frankston and the peninsula has changed a lot in the past couple of years. It's much better. Frankston had previously been cast aside, I've no doubt about that, and we promised to change that, and we have listened and we have acted. We now have more projects happening in this three and a half year period than ever in our history. Locals tell me every day they're happy, they like the progressive nature of where we're going, the positive face of Frankston that's changing every day. And you can feel the energy in the street when you're walking down Young Street. There has never been more investment in public transport in Frankston than ever before in our history. Just up on, on that subject, we're spending $2 billion on the Frankston line. Uh, we are removing 13 level crossings, building 10 new stations. That's more than any other line in Melbourne. We said we would remove 20 level crossings. Uh, it was two days ago that it marked a, a point where we have removed 25 in that time. And that's something I think uh, we should be proud of. Now, going back to a little bit of a comparison, the previous government did not remove any. They talked a lot, but they did not remove any. And the important thing about removing these level crossings is less level crossings means we can fit uh, up on the, the whole line, that is means we can fit more trains on the line, less delays, and people can get to work and wherever they need to in a hell of a lot quicker times. Frankston and the Peninsula, of course, are growing, and that is why we need a vision for the future and we need to build for that future now. Uh, it's no good catching up in a couple of years, and that's why we're getting things done right now. That future is very bright, um, and I'd, I'd ask anyone in Frankston um, to challenge me on that if you walk down Young Street at the moment uh, and see the amount of work that is going on to lift our community into that major transport hub for the peninsula, it is quite an amazing sight. But at the heart of the infrastructure and transport plan for Victoria is the Melbourne Metro Tunnel. Now, it opens in 2025, 7,000 people will be employed on that, on that site throughout its life. and. You might be saying to yourself now, well, I'm in Frankston and the Peninsula, what does that mean to me? Well, it means that we get more trains on the line, so the average commuter uh, on their weekly commute from Frankston to the city will save two hours a week. That's two hours more that you can spend with your family and not on a train. Um, you know, some people like travelling on a train, doing their work and everything. I'd prefer to spend that with my family at home. Uh, we just opened the bespoke national design competition winning Frankston Station. And I, I've already spoken to people tonight about um, how iconic that is for Frankston and the Peninsula. It's the gateway for the Peninsula. It is, it is a thing to behold. It's got a high stature. Um, it's architecturally designed and it looks fantastic. And it's really, um, I think it's really becoming a Frankston as well. Today, we had the Premier down. Of course, we opened the Overton Road level crossing, something that uh, traffic has been uh, flowing under it. Um, since Saturday, but of course trains have been uh, going over that rail bridge for the past couple of weeks. This is something that was promised by a former government, a former Liberal government in 1970. Twelve years later, they got booted out of government. Guess what? The level crossing was still there. In 2013, the former member for Frankston, Jeff Shaw, said it's dangerous, we need to get rid of it. Guess what? It was still there till a couple of months ago. We did it, we got rid of it. No more 20 minute waits, no more people dying because of that level crossing. Um, there's lots more to talk about, obviously. I do want to list some of the things that, that are going on in this region at the moment. Um, the Young Street redevelopment, it looks beautiful. Under the previous government, again, it's stalled. Um, and we've got it, we've got it going. Um, obviously, we've, we will hear probably a little bit more about the factual electrification and duplication business case tonight. That's ongoing, we, we received the funding in January and that business case is being worked on as we speak. Um, the first tangible funding for that construction is actually happening right now. There's been $1 million spent on new signalling so that when that business case is done and when that is funded, we can actually connect that right in. So there's no mucking around and retrofitting. Of course we announced the, in this budget the Golf Links Road upgrade, 
the Latham's Road upgrade, and thanks to the Committee for Greater Frankston for their advocacy and their data on that. It really helped us get the case across, uh, myself and Tony Kilkenny, that is. Um, and we also are building the 65 new uh, high capacity trains. Built locally in Newport, so local jobs, but we will see them on, on lines like the Frankston line, meaning that you can travel in a train and it won't be so crowded. We also saved uh, recently one of the most popular bus services on the peninsula, the Penn bus, the 887 bus. Um, funding was uh, taken away from that service. We had kids who used that service to get to TAFE, to get to Chisholm, to get to Monash, and they were left high and dry halfway through their, their courses. Um, and now we've got kids that are actually able to get to their courses and complete those courses and, of course, get jobs. Um, we've also, importantly, uh, spent a fair amount of funding on CCTV in our transit precinct along with our friends at Frankston City Council. Uh, the important thing about that is it's plumbed directly to the docile at Frankston Police Station and I guess the, the main factor there is that we can be, uh, we can have police actually looking at, um, you might call them frequent flyers or, or known associates to the police, um, people of interest maybe, and they can actually find those, uh, find those offenders and stop that crime before it actually happens. Now, these things aren't easy. It's fair to say, if they were, they would have been done a long time ago. And I'm not just talking four years ago, um, I'm talking a long time ago, and they probably should have been. But the best thing about uh, what's happening in Frankston is businesses are choosing Frankston, investors are choosing Frankston. Now, a few minutes ago I asked you how many cranes were in the sky above the skyline of Frankston in 2014. Can anyone tell me? That's because there were none. It was zero. Zero investment from the former government. Zero confidence in our, in our town. Um, four years of doing nothing in government. Four years of complaining and being adversarial to everything in opposition. Um, I think it's time that Frankston was seen in a positive light. I know you do too. And that's my vision for, for Frankston, to make sure that we actually achieve all our aspirations that we want to achieve. And we're well on our way. Now, you can walk 100 metres down the street here if you don't believe me. You can go down to Young Street and tonight um, on, a, on a new street, um, you can get on a new station and in 2025, you'll be able to, can I just finish my sentence? You'll be able to get on a new high capacity train every two to three minutes, get on the Frankston line and pass um, 10 new stations and the 13 sites that were formerly level crossing, uh, level crossing sites that we actually removed. Thank you everyone and I look forward to continuing the conversation.